members for about six years now at what used to be IBM Palladium Toastmasters, now Decisive Toastmasters. And to both be in the trio in the same year, uh, I think is a really special experience for me. And I'm happy to have her aboard. So to present how to establish and support new clubs, distinguished Toastmaster, Tanya Hall. is Ron and I have also worked really hard at creating clubs together and we're very much a dynamic duo in that regard so I know you guys have just finished lunch and I know you're sitting there thinking oh I have a lot of my mind with the area director and what do I do and where do I get started and now I'm throwing club sponsoring and milk mentoring and building clubs right on top of you every time but we're going to talk about the missions and goals That's that building clubs has. We're going to talk about who builds them and how we build them. And everything we do in Toastmasters has to relate back to our Toastmasters mission, to our district mission, because that's our funding guide, guiding principles that we try to strive for. So we're going to go through that today, and by the end of this session, you're going to be able to identify how and why building clubs is going to support the mission how it's going to add value to your role as an area director. You're going to know where to go to get the support to do it and how to identify opportunities. And I think that last one is a big one. How to identify opportunities. We need to know where to look. You see your areas, you've been club members, you look around and you're like, we struggle to get our own guests. How do I build a new club? How many people struggle to get guests? And you're thinking, why do I need to look for clubs, right? We want people to come in our door. We don't want them to go to somebody else's door. But we're going to talk today about why we want to build other doors for them to go to as well. Okay? Do you have a question for you? Oh, I just scratched my head. Exactly. <laughs> so the Toastmasters mission. We empower individuals to become more effective communicators and leaders. Say it again. We empower individuals to become more effective leaders and leaders. How does the district mission support that? Do you guys remember what the district mission is? Support. Yeah. So the district mission that goes, we build new clubs and support all clubs in achieving how does the district mission support the Toastmaster mission? The more, the more clubs you build, the more, the more support you get to them, the more able they are to filter that into creating effective communicative leaders. Yeah. We're just creating opportunities. Mm -hmm. Expanding that opportunity. Giving them a chance to go to a place where they can learn and grow. Maybe they're not able to meet on Saturday mornings. Let's create a club where they can meet. Maybe they're not able to go on a Tuesday at lunch. Let's create a club that works for them. So we're just simply, through the district mission of building new clubs and supporting all clubs and achieving excellence, we're simply creating opportunities. Okay? When we look at building clubs, we have to think of the benefits. When, how many people here have ever had the privilege to mentor someone through a new role, first speech? Do you remember the excitement you got when you did that? You saw them stand up there and you were nervous for them and they're standing up and they're giving their icebreaker and you're like, you're gonna do it, you're gonna do it, you're gonna do it, and then they succeed. Remember that feeling, that feeling we get of, we succeeded, we succeeded as mentors. We help somebody get that first step. And that stays with you. Stays with you. Now think of replicating that to 20 members. That feeling when you see 20 members come together, form a club, and deliver their first icebreaker. You've just taken that feeling and repl replicated it across the board. And that feeling doesn't go away. I was at a 15th anniversary party a few weeks ago, 
and you saw people that were there 15 years ago saying, I remember the day when. Wouldn't it be great if you can sit back and say, I remember the day when. Because you have a part in that. And that's one of the benefits of building clubs, is that satisfaction you get. But what are some other benefits you get when you build a club? You personally. Or a member. Yeah. Uh, build your legacy. You can build a legacy. I, as I write this, I will tell you guys, I am got to be the worst speller in the world. Just don't acknowledge it. <laughs> <laughs> Build a legacy. What else? What other personal benefits do we get when we build clothes? I build our own confidences. Build confidence. Build a new network of colleagues. Oh, you just met a whole new club of people. You share a vision. Mm -hmm. What else? New market. Sorry, a new market? New market. New market of people. Yeah, so network. I'm saying network. never done before. So we grow our own leadership skills. Mm -hmm. How many people in this room have ever built a club? Sponsor, mentor a club? Is it easy? No. It's a lot of work. We learn challenges, we learn hurdles, and we learn how to deal with them. But we also learn how to work as a team. We don't do it alone. It's not an individual thing. We need people around us. So our teamwork and our ability to work as a team grows. Now, flip to the other side. What do the members get when we build new clubs? Opportunity. They get opportunity. What else do they get? Knowledge. They get knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> Everything you said on the left. <laughs> yes, pretty much. <laughs> Specifically? Become more confident. They get confidence. Experimentation. Are you really challenging my style? <laughs> <laughs> Ex fear. Experimentation. No comments. Zip. No comments. <laughs> what else? Leadership one stands out. They get to develop their own leadership skills. What's the second? They also get to build their own network. So as much as we're meeting 20 new people, they're meeting 20 new people. Right. They acquire skills that bring them closer to achieving their personal life mission. Mm -hmm. <coughs> skills <laughs> for life. Skills for life. <laughs> PDU, P for PMI. You know, personal professional development. Performance. Performance. Yeah. Personal development unit. units. Units mm -hmm. for the PMI or confidence. Okay. You know, it was funny. I was talking huh? at the back of the room. One of the things that they get is they get the back to opportunity, they get the opportunity to increase their paycheck. Because when you become better communicators and leaders, there's actually
actually benefits to them, to that. So you're helping them achieve their goals for life. You're helping them get that promotion that they didn't know they could. But maybe you're helping them stand up at a wedding and give that toast that they wanted to give. But you're giving them all of that opportunity. And now it's like, how do we do that? So new clubs offer Toastmasters the benefit. They offer us the benefit, and they offer the guests the benefit. And when we establish new clubs, it allows everybody to improve their communication. Your job as area directors is to help support this. Now you guys may want to sit there, and hopefully at the end of this, you'll all come to me and say, I want to grow a new club this year. Okay? That's the dream. Everybody builds a new club. But it's also important to know when your members come to you and say, you know, I've been wondering about building this club. What does it mean? What's involved? You not need to know that information. You need to know that if you don't know it, come to me and my team and we'll help you with it. But this presentation today will give you that fundamental that you need to know so that you can build and answer those questions. Okay? Oh. Interesting. Who? Who builds clubs? I can't do it alone. Everyone. Everyone. Everyone does it. When there is an opportunity. Yeah. Everybody has the opportunity to see and uncover leads. You guys are on the screen. You guys know where there's holes. You see the holes. So area directors and division directors, look at your map. Where are your clubs? Where are they meeting and when are they meeting? And is there a spot that a club could fit? When I was area director, the first thing I did, I had a calendar book. And I took all of the clubs in my, so there was five as an area director, and I mapped them out. When was the meeting and where was the meeting? So now I can see my map. And I can say, okay, I've got Sunday night free and I've got Wednesday free. Well, if I've got Wednesday free, that means there's no clubs in my area on Wednesday. All of a sudden, why? Could there be? Would it work if there was a club in my area on Wednesday? I don't know, but it's worth taking that second look. So map your clubs out. See where they meet. There was one area last year, I think it was area 11, they all met at lunchtime. Well, that also tells me that maybe in Area 11 there might be room for nighttime folks if they're all lunchtime folks. Mm -hmm. So we need to start looking at that and seeing where those gaps are. I'm not sure what everybody's goals are this year. But as you guys think about what your goals are, if it's to build a club, great. If it's to identify an opportunity where the gap is, that's good to you. Because as, as club growth director, I have a team that's built to go out and take those leads because not everybody wants to build clubs. They just don't. But there is a team out there that would take your lead and say, Wednesday night, we need a club. We need a club in this area on Wednesday night. And that team will take that lead and start to generate it and build it into something. As area and division directors, your goal is to improve your district in your area. Your goal is to grow new clubs. If that's not your personal goal, that's okay. But share the knowledge within your area so that others can help you and be there to help them when they need it. You've got club sponsors and mentors. Those are the people out there that want to grow a club. They're looking for their DTM credit and they need that sponsoring and mentoring credit club to help them. They're going to be there to work with you. And as an area director and division director, you're gonna work with them to support them. You're gonna guide them to where they need to go to get the resources. We have a dedicated sponsoring and mentoring chair that will work with all the sponsors and mentors. So you're not just saying you're on your own. Read the manual, have fun. <laughs> Have fun. And oh, by the way, the manual's only in English. <laughs> Read it and have fun. We actually have a bilingual sponsor mentor chair that is going to work each month with the team. Help them uncover the, the needs that they need in order to be successful. And I think that's pretty remarkable that we have that. We're going to
going to go through, I'm going to take water, but we're going to go through this exercise and we're going to answer. So the next few slides are going to talk about whose role is it? So whose job is it? And it's important to know whose job it is so that we can direct the, the question to the right person. Okay? So whose job is it to serve as a contact for <coughs> demo meetings and pre-charter info meetings? Area director. Your choices are on the bottom. Mm -hmm. District director, club growth, club sponsor, club. Mm -hmm. Serve as a contact for demo meetings and pre-charter info meetings. Club sponsor. Club sponsor. Club sponsor. Generate interest and recruit members in new clubs. Club growth Possibly. C club sponsor. C club sponsor. So C. Show new clubs how to hold meetings and elect officers. Club sponsors. Club sponsors. Submit charter paperwork, fees, and dues to world headquarters. Club sponsor. Club sponsor. <laughs> Plan charter meetings. Club sponsor. Club sponsor. Now it says charter meetings. Let's change charter meeting to charter party because we like to yes. celebrate it. But a club sponsor is the person that gets the club from zero members to 20 members. They make sure that at 20 members, there is an executive team in place. They make sure all of the paperwork is filled out, the dues are paid, and that everybody knows what they're doing. That's zero to 20 members. Okay? Nadia. Yeah? Is if you 
are an area director and you want to sponsor a club, will you have an executive role on that new club? Yeah. That's a club decision. So all the run elections, they decide who's going to be on there. You have to be a club member in order to be a club executive. <coughs> so if you're a club sponsor, you're not technically a club member unless you fill out the paperwork and pay the dues. Okay, but then after that, it comes down to an election process, just like we do in our own clubs. Davinder, you had a question on that. Um, you're going to talk about it later. Okie dokie. <laughs> Any other questions before I move on? Club building receives leads from world headquarters and confirms alignment of new clubs. District director. District director. Yeah. And that's where, you know, every year we're going to build clubs. We're going to build them. And we're going to likely, I'm going to say likely, correct me if I'm wrong, we're going to put those clubs in the area that the person built them in. Because if Nadia builds a club in her area, we're going to give Nadia's area the credit. But when we look at it at the end of the year, it may not make sense to have all of those. If Nadia is a rock star and she creates eight new clubs, plus her current five, she may not want 13 <coughs> clubs in her area. No, 13, 12. So math is my second strong suit. <laughs> <laughs> so club alignment is going to come in. They're going to portion it out. So it's going to start in one area, get a portion out so that no one area is overloaded and it'll be spread out that way. And that's the role of the district director. Okay. Any questions on where the district director does in this? What's the salary? <laughs> he gets paid by recognition and appreciation. It's the currency wow. of Toastmasters. <laughs> Uh, guide clubs through for six to twelve months. Mentors, mentor, club mentor, ensure club officer understands duties and how to perform them. Familiarizes club officers with Toastmasters education program, and then familiarizes the club officers with the distinguished club program. So the mentor picks up when the club gets to twenty members and stays with that club for the first six to 12 months. Why? Give them guidance. What's that? To give them guidance. To give them guidance. To operate the club. Yeah. It's like when a guest becomes a member they filled in their membership application, they've given you the money, and you say thanks. And you don't talk to them for six months. What's going to happen to them? They're going to leave. They're going to leave. It's the same thing with the club. We want to make sure that they're all on the same board. What is a TLI? What is conference? Why would I go? What am I going to get out of it? The mentor is going to help guide them through that. Maybe they haven't had the election process. Maybe they just all assigned through names out of a hat and that was their election process. You're laughing because it's true. <laughs> this is a good one, by the way. Not, not in the rules, but this is a good one. <laughs> so we want to show them how we do an election. We want to properly execute it. We want to show them how they submit their renewals, their forms, and we want to make sure they're on track. And the more we give up our time for that, the stronger club they're going to be. So in 15 years, we can celebrate the money anniversary party. We want to give them that fundamentals. Dr. What is your view about club sponsors and mentors actually being mem members of the club also? I'm fine with it. I have a problem with it. What's your view? Does it, 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 do they have to or? No. Um, so I'll tell you a story in, in my <coughs> experience. Um, everybody, so Tony, Lee, Ron, and I started CoLab Toastmasters. Um, none of us were members. It was just an opportunity that was handed to us and we took it and ran with it. Two of us were coded as sponsors and two of us were coded as mentors. I'm not even sure to this day I could tell you which one I was coded as because the four of us worked together as a team. 
We did it as a team from ground zero to the six to 12 months after. None of us were members of the club until the club got close to chartering and two of us became members. Not because we were looking to charter it, because two people fell in love with the club. Mm -hmm. They fell in love with the club and they could get something from the club for themselves. And they stayed with that club a little longer. That's okay. So if you're creating a club in an area because you have a need and you want to be a member, then do it. But do it for you. That would be my, my take. Do it for you. Don't go and be a member of eight clubs because that's what you feel you have to do. Do it for your own personal satisfaction and make sure you know why you're there. Because knowing your why is what we ask guests. Why are you here? Ask yourself, why am I wanting to be a member of this club? If they're 19 and you want to get that to charter, that might be your why. And that's an okay why. But know what your why is. The question is, can you have multiple club mentors and multiple club sponsors, more than the number two? Yes, you can, only to get credit. Okay. So if you want to talk four people into doing the work and only give them credit to two, let me know how it works. <laughs> um, but some people will come along. There are a lot of mentors in this district that will mentor sponsors and mentors. So. Use them. They're a wealth of knowledge. They will come out and support and help you along the way. And they're not looking for the credit. They're looking to be acknowledged with things. And that's okay. okay. Any other questions on how those work? Boys. I'm confused between club mentor and coach. I, I have, I see a lot of them. Mentor and club. coach? The difference. Sure. So, Mentors and sponsors are really when the club is in formation. So sponsors are 0 to 20, mentors are 20 plus 6 months, okay? That is a new club. A coach is a club that's already received their charter at some point. So they've gotten their banner, they've been in production, they've been doing things, and then their numbers hit a lull, and they're not sure how to get them back. So their numbers drop below 13, and they need that extra help to come back to where they should be. And that's where a coach will start. So a coach will help an existing club get stronger, and a sponsor and a mentor will help a new club come into formation. Thank you. Any other questions on those four rules? Hi. Right. Are you guys ready to learn how we build clubs? No, I'm going to fast forward a few slides here. Okay, club building cycle. There is six steps to building a club. First, we have to identify the leads. Then we have to contact them and see if they're open to a meeting. Then we have to present the meeting and the value of Toastmasters to them. We have to answer their questions and be there for them if they have any follow-up. Then we lead them through a demo and a chartering process. And then we follow up. And follow up is that six months afterwards to make sure they're on track. We're going to break these sections down into bite-sized pieces. <coughs> Did you get that? You were taking a photo still? I was a photogenic person. Leads. And, and we briefly touched on this before. Leads can come from anywhere. See what's around you. What pockets are uncovered in your area? Are there meeting opportunities for morning, lunchtime, nighttime? Is there a day of the week that's missing a spot? Is there a business near you? Or maybe a church group that is looking for that extra activity to happen? There, Everywhere, you just have to open your eyes and start thinking through a new set of lenses. Different varieties in it. Now, you can open up your network. Maybe they're not all having the same team meeting on the same day. 
maybe there's a couple of different things. Maybe they're not all working on the same project and other people can then start to come. So if a corporation is willing to host the meeting and you're in a business park, are there other businesses around that can be tapped on to say, we're having a business meeting over here, do you guys want to come and collaborate with us? Start bringing them in. Start expanding that instead of saying, ooh, the business isn't big enough or it's not sustainable or they always get pulled away and they're, they're not really great at coming together. They're always on projects. Well, what else can add to that? Can we open it up and make it a public community or corporate club? We can start looking at options like that as well. Uh, what's next? Leads come in in all sorts of ways. And one of the tasks that I'm going to ask you guys to work on um, as a group, as well as filtering it down to your members, is identifying these leads. We're going to have a lead incentive where uh, leads will be handed in and there'll be incentives attached to the leads that are qualified. So more information will come on that. I'm not sure when, but it's in draft. But what's going to happen is when a lead comes in, it can come in in a variety of states. Maybe it is, oh, there's this company over there, uh, it's called the City of Ottawa, they might be a good opportunity. Okay, that's not bad. But here's the City of Ottawa, and you should call Rob Gill. His number is, well now all of a sudden I have a name and a number. So not everybody here is going to be telemarketers. Who here is a telemarketer? Okay, it's, sometimes it's not our strong suit. And that's okay, because other people really excel at it. And that's, those are the people we're going to bring on the team to start making those calls. So we're going to give Rob a call and we're going to say, Rob, I understand that you're at the City of Ottawa and I understand you might have needs. Let's talk about those. And now all of a sudden, I've got some information on Rob that I know. He doesn't need to know I know everything, but I know. And I can start driving my questions to him. Rob, you manage people, don't you? How many? 20. 20 people. Rob is a manager of 20 people. Rob, wouldn't you like it if those people could actually communicate with each other a little bit better? Oh, yes. Oh. What is your biggest pain point, Rob, when you're talking about 20 people and managing them? Conflict resolution. Conflict resolution. Did you know that Toastmasters deals with conflict resolution? And we do that through a team environment and we help people come together and collaborate peer to peer, allowing you to solve that problem. I like the sound of that. Would you like to hear more? Yes, I would. And that's how you start that conversation. <laughs> 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 so I'll let you know when I manage 20 people. <laughs> I'll let you know when I have conflict resolution down pat. <laughs> um, and so yeah, we you know we get those little bits of details. And we can grow on that and build it, but it's asking one question after another. If I had gone to Rob and said, Rob, I want to come in and I want to present to you Toastmasters. What are you going to say, Rob? I don't have time for that. Why not? I'm too busy. I have to deal with my employees. <laughs> 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 with my employees. <laughs> but that's exactly what he's going to say to me. I don't have time to hear what you're selling because I just don't have time. But if I can create that proposition for him as to why he needs to make the time, then that's a better opportunity. So when we're thinking of leads, we need to start thinking about why would they need Toastmasters? Not just because they're a big building. You're a big building, lots of windows, I think I need to talk to you. There's more to it. Why? Why do we need it? We need to uncover that why so that we can start that proposition. Um, we want to make sure we have the right decision makers in place. Um, government is an excellent example. Okay. Government employees here? Any level? If I call and I call and I'm like, hey, Zarin, I want to come in and talk to you about Toastmasters. What are you going to say? What is Toastmasters? <laughs> He's going to say, I can't do it. Why can't you do it? Go ahead and my desk. Because it's not your job. It's not your level. You can talk. I can talk to Zarin all day long. She's interested. But, but I might uh, get him as a member. I'm never going to get him to allow the whole building to participate in it. And if I'm presenting, I want that whole building to present. 
I want managers to drive it to their employees. I want people like Rob who manages 20 people that says all 20 of you need to go, you need to get your uh, pathways level five and then come back and see me because I'm not dealing with this until you do it. I need people like that. So I want to be presenting to people like that. And so we want to make sure we're getting those decision makers. Can they make the decision to have a meeting with Toastmasters? Can they make the decision to allow Toastmasters in their building? If they can't, let's go that next level. I want to present to the right people. I don't know about you guys, but time is precious. Time precious? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't want to go out and present to 50 people to find out it's the 50 wrong people. Let's go and present to the five right me. Let's take that extra time, dig who is that right person. And we always want to ask the right questions. We want to listen to the responses and we want to build on that. We want to build through storytelling. We want to build through value proposition. So what is your needs and how can I help solve those? <coughs> Any questions on contact and qualifying? We're going to present the demo meme. And this is exactly what it sounds like. It is a demo meeting. How many people have participated in a demo meeting? It is a smaller version of a Toastmaster meeting. Usually you have one speech, one speech evaluation, three or four table topics, but at each step of the way, you're explaining what you're doing and why. And that why is going to be different depending on your audience. If I'm presenting to HR managers, my why is going to be because it's going to help your employees. If I'm presenting to a community, the why is going to be because it can help you. Okay, so we want to identify the why. So we've got our demo team. There is lots of marketing material available from TI. Have that material at all demo meetings. What's the value of Toastmasters? How to join a Toastmasters club? When does the Toastmaster club meet? Where does it meet? So you want to pull that information all together. Kimberly said it earlier, so just to recap, anytime you're placing a club order for products, if you have or need anything focused around membership or club building, it is free with an order of anything else. You're allowed it twice a year. Okay, so two times a year you can order free promotional material from TI. Good? At the club. At the club. At the club. Et si on veut le faire dans un club francophone, est-ce que tout ce matériel est disponible en français? Oui. On ne dit pas, là. Oui. Je fais le club. Promotional club. Oui. Ça fait pas. Ça fait pas. Oui. Dans un shop. Oui. The question was, correct me if I'm wrong. Is it available in French? Is it available in French? Marketing material is available in French. Five new pieces are getting ready to be launched in July, which will be out, so stay tuned for those, but there is more material in the hopper ready to come out, okay? So, they're saying July, I've never... I heard five new collateral pieces coming out in French for the purpose of membership building. Great, great. So, I'm hopeful that July is July. Um, so that's available. But our old Toastmaster magazines, those are an awesome resource to use. Once you've read them, give them away. Pass them away. Have them at these demo meetings. Share, share them. And then we want to address questions, concerns, and we want to ask for the opportunity to establish a club. Asking for the opportunity to establish a club is the same as asking a guest to be a member. It's the same process. You've liked what you've heard today. You saw the value of it today. Now, would you like to form a club? It's a simple ask. The worst they're going to say is no, which is the exact same response as if you didn't even ask. It's the same response. <laughs> That's your takeaway today. I convert a no to a not now. Yeah. 
But if you didn't ask. You ask, but if they say no, it could be not now, maybe yeah. in a few months, maybe next year. Yeah. Um, chartering. So when we think about chartering, there is a lot of paperwork that goes into mm -hmm. the chartering process. Don't be intimidated by it. We will walk you through it. So the application to organize is a five-page document. A lot of information goes into it. It can seem daunting, but we'll get through it. Okay? Mm -hmm. Everybody has, everybody will, and we'll do it together as a team. Um, and uh, the one big thing when you charter, don't forget to have the charter party. <laughs> Celebrate it. I love clubs that can charter in an hour. Fabulous, they get a small party. <laughs> clubs that can charter in a year, they deserve that full party. <laughs> Cake, pop, beverages, have it all. Boom. Enjoy it. Because everybody worked hard. And don't forget to invite all of those guest speakers that gave up their time to come in, mm -hmm. to offer content, to help you out. Bring them all together. Celebrate that success. Because it's hard work. And you guys earned it. Okay. Um, and then your follow-up. This comes back to your mentors. So the follow-up is make sure that they're on track. Make sure that they're doing the right things. And this is where you as an area director steps in as well. Okay? The club is chartered. The club is doing well. As an area director, you might think, oh, you know what, i got to space it out amongst all my clubs. But it's this club that needs more of your time. They are new. They have no idea about life outside. Help them. Connect with them and make sure that they've got a good foundation to grow on, okay? And help them with their network, because your network is guaranteed bigger than theirs. You may think right now that you only know the 20 people in your club. They only know theirs. So share your network with them and let that kind of be a growing purpose. And then repeat. Do it all over again. Once you build one club, it's addictive. You can build another. <laughs> Just like that. We have goals. The district itself has a goal to be medley distinguished. To do that, we need new clubs. <laughs> we need help from you guys to do it. And that help can come in different phases. Maybe it's a lead. Maybe it's supporting a sponsor or a mentor. Maybe it's being a sponsor or a mentor. Or maybe it's working and, and going into those corporations and into those communities to build up a program for them. So it can come from anywhere, but the big thing is work together and do it together. Because when we work together, it's a little bit of work for everybody and a lot of success for the district. Any questions or comments? Randy? What is realistic in the year for us to build new clubs, like realistically? I can't answer that for you. So the question is, what is realistic to build new clubs in a year? Every person is going to be different, okay? Every person. Um, some people will have oodles amount of time, and some won't. Some people are gonna wanna focus on their role as an area director, maybe you're also a club officer, and that's gonna be your primary focus, and that's okay too. But maybe there's a member in that club that wants to do it. And no, no, my question was, like, the, the district, how many clubs would they be like? We think? did five new clubs this year, and next year we want to do more. So if I had to quantify it, do you have a quantity number? I do have a number. Okay. It's a yeah, distinguished number, I think. Throw that number out there, Ron. 30. What? Yeah. Big, big new member. 30, yeah. 30 new clubs. Big, big of the Smith members. So, we're going to require a net growth of about 14 clubs. I'll talk about this a little later, but the quick session. We need to grow the district by about 14 clubs to qualify for Smedley Distinguished. We're likely to lose between uh, 8 to 15 clubs this year because they're, it's kind of what happens. Some clubs get to their end of life and they'll fall over. Uh, for example, there is a club that we already know is gone, Crystal Beach Toastmasters. 
they still show up as a club in good standing right now come September, they're gonna vanish. And so these counts are gonna go down. And so we need a net growth of 14. If we target anything less than trying to achieve 25 to 30 clubs, we have no opportunity to achieve our objectives. Now, when we shoot for the stars and we hit the moon, I'm okay with that. But we need to aim for the stars. So we need to plan in every area in this district to try to charter a new club. If we all do that and half of us succeed, we'll be doing pretty well. So here's my mathematical challenge for you. How many areas are your, in your division, Randy? Five. Five. So if each area director charters a new club, that's five. There's eight divisions. Five, five. Forty. Four, five. So if every area director charters one club, we're at 40. Now we know not every area director is going to do it. We know it. But some area directors or division directors like Gavinder is going to do four. So his team can thank him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but everybody else can benefit from that team. <laughs> create four more for you. So we're going to, people that love to do it, love to do it, okay? It's not on us, it's on everybody. And it goes back to that very beginning slide. Who charters clubs? Everybody. So you may actually have somebody sitting in your area right now that is sitting there going, I was area director five years ago, I didn't liked it, I haven't really thought about what I want to do right now, I'm not serving the district, I'm not even on the officer list, what am I going to do with my time? There really is people like that. Find them. Find them. How do you find them? Visit your clubs. Meet the members. Talk to them. They are out there an interesting conversation on Friday night with one gentleman, and he said, nobody asked me to do it, so I didn't do it. Mm. Huh, <laughs> guess what I asked him? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, well, how many do you want? And I'm like, I'll start with four. He's got two. So ask, find those uh, people that love to do it, and ask them. People that are looking to get their DTM credit need to sponsor and mentor a club. It's a fundamental thing. It can take anywhere from a few hours to a year plus. Start it now. Okay? Start it now. If you want your DTM credit, start it now. Going back to the leads, so I know it was a perfect club, uh, a key person in contact. What else do you want from a, a community area, like a geographic area? What else would you like in terms of club life? So I'm going to pick your location in specific. So Lisa is in Canada, and she's a community club. But I would look at the area that Lisa's in, and I would say, there isn't, this is assuming your club is not there. This area needs a community club. Where can I hold it? And that's when I start looking at what buildings can hold a meeting. What buildings can hold a meeting? Now I'm gonna to go to those buildings and I'm gonna say, you know what? This uh, community center here, it's got enough space. I bet you they could house a building or a meeting and I'm gonna to go to the building. So I'm not gonna to go to a person. Let's go to the building and have the building drive it. Find those community centers. Find those, I'm trying to think of other ones, churches that will host a meeting and then drive it in that way, okay? If you find a restaurant that's got a private meeting space, drive it in. Restaurants will work with you all day long if you're gonna bring 20 people every week. Mm -hmm. Find it, okay? want you had a question earlier. Uh, yeah, because uh, I was thinking about sponsoring more. And um, so, so, what is that actual requirement? So, if I have a chance to present those workers next week, by the end of the next week, I would have to come to the back. What do I need to do to actually go and present for some, for some food? 
So when you're getting ready to present it, if you've got that opportunity and that idea, what I would suggest is have that conversation with me. Have it with me. I've got a team that's ready to support you so that you're not going in alone. I have heard one time that somebody went in and did a presentation and, then, and they came back and they said, I'm not a salesperson. It totally screwed it up. Not a salesperson and now I can't go back to the place. So let's work together and, and hit it out of the park. Um, I, I say I've got people. I've got people in Ottawa, Montreal, and Quebec City. They're there to support us. That's what they want to do. Let's use them. Okay. So don't don't go into a meeting alone unless it's a personal connection. Bring a couple of people. Okay. And and I'm happy to make those connections. Either I can go with or connect the dots and find the right person to go with. Um, now, Nadia asked earlier about sponsoring clubs. We hear, you know, as members, we're, we're sponsors and we're mentors, but sometimes a club will sponsor a new club. And what does that mean? Okay. It means that a sponsoring club is going to help. They're going to help fill the agenda until they've got their 20. Anybody ever run a club meeting with three to five people? Mm -hmm. It sucks. Mm -hmm. It literally sucks. But if you have a sponsoring club that you can call on and say, my meeting is running and it's running this week and I know I only have four people at it, any chance you can help me out? They'll go, yeah, sure, no problem. One, two, three, four, off you go. And they will send people to support you. And that's what a sponsoring club does. When we file the paperwork to say there's a sponsoring club, then the sponsoring club gets a nice ribbon for their banner when you're successful. They will celebrate in your success and they will be at your charter party. Okay? So a sponsoring club doesn't have to financially commit. They don't have to do the, a lot of the heavy lifting. They just have to be there when the sponsors and mentors call for help. Okay? Does that answer your question? Sort of. Okay. afford to pay the rent, the supplies, and everything like that? The answer is collect membership. Fill in the membership forms, collect your membership dues. With your ATO, you can, or, yeah, with your ATO, you can deposit that right into the bank account and you can operate like a full club. So that's the second question. The first question was with Pathways being online, how do we start a new club and allow a member that isn't technically allowed to get on TI site mm -hmm. to be able to access pathways. We do what's called parking members. Okay? Dangerous, dangerous, dangerous in a club that might be in charter territory or in coaching territory. <coughs> you want to pick a really strong club to park members at. Because what you're going to do is you're going to take all of those membership applications and you're going to put them and assign them to Club ABC. When you assign them to ABC, ABC's membership numbers go up. Yay, they just increase their membership numbers. But when you need to, you're going to move them out of ABC and you're going to move them into 123. Okay, so ABC will have a membership increase, then they'll have a membership decrease, and 123 will have their membership increase. But that's how they can access pathways. But if you do it and they're close to needing a club coach, you're going to have that club in jeopardy. Okay? This is the first time I hear about this strategy. Yes. Um, and my understanding is to charter a club, it has to be new members. You can't transfer members from another club to count as your 20 charter members. They cancel from the one and yeah, they move so to the other. Have, you can create a club full of transfer members. The limitation is you can only have three dual members at the end that make up the 20. That's right. Okay. So 
in, in, in this process, uh, you know, Club ABC is a strong club. They have more than 20 members, and so they're not going to be affected by the variation in membership. Uh, so you, the new, the club in formation, one, two, three, submits their ATO, and they start registering their members over at ABC. We get immediate access to pathways. Things are working well at one, two, three. We're able to conduct fairly regular meetings, access the program. And then when it comes time to that magic point where we have the 20 members to charter one, two, three, part of what we do is transfer the members that were registered with ABC over to one, two, three, and transfer members will count. Now, if you had some members that joined one, two, three, and are now parked at ABC, and they said, well, this is really cool. I'm gonna join club DEF and club GHI, they're now dual members. Yeah. And so if you transfer their membership out of ABC into uh, 123, they count as one of the three dual members. So a transfer is good as a quote unquote new member or part of the 17 non-dual members, as long as it, after the transfer, they're only a member of 123. So this could be a role of a sponsoring club. Absolutely, because the sponsoring club now has base camp manager commitments to these folks. Okay. Pathways created that problem, and that was the disparity. <coughs> yeah, Dan Rex personally told me to do that. <laughs> so, at this point, I am going to conclude, and I will pass it back to Juan. But I am around if anybody has any other questions on it. If you want to sign up for the demo meeting, if you want to be a sponsor, if you want to be a club mentor, let me know. I'll bring you into the loop of communication, and we'll start building this together. Thank you.